Children with mental health conditions are increasingly treated with antipsychotic medications for a variety of what are called disruptive behavior disorders. And we ask the question, what happens to changes in body fat and insulin sensitivity during the first 12 weeks of that kind of exposure? Antipsychotic naive children were randomized to treatment with either olanzapine, risperidone, or aripiprazole. And we measured changes in body fat uh, through something called DEXA and magnetic resonance imaging. Changes in insulin sensitivity were, was measured by something called a hyperinsulinemic euglycemic clamp. The children also had changes in their psychiatric status measured. So the good news is that the children uh, who very often had been suspended from school uh, had significant and rather clinically robust improvements in their psychiatric symptom scores. Irritability and aggression went down, and there was no difference between the individual medications and in how much of that improvement you saw. But our primary endpoints were change in body fat and change in insulin sensitivity, and there were significant differences in how body fat and insulin sensitivity changed during the first 12 weeks of exposure, depending on what drug you were on. So children treated with olanzapine, for example, had the largest increases in DEXA-measured body fat, percent body fat, during 12 weeks. And there was very similar, uh, smaller increase in body fat in children treated with risperidone and aripiprazole. The change in insulin sensitivity was similarly larger on olanzapine and similarly smaller on both risperidone and aripiprazole. So for the last 14 years, I chaired the Missouri Medicaid Drug Utilization Review Board, and I'm not a child psychiatrist. And I, as we watch the rates of prescription of antipsychotics in children go up over those years, I have to admit that I was somewhat skeptical about why people were even using these medications off-label in that kind of population. What I learned was that there are these robust improvements in psychiatric symptoms that happen with these treatments. I'm not saying I think it's a wonderful idea to treat children, but I did become um, more understanding of why it is that doctors, clinicians have been going back to those kind of medications and using them. But what we learned in terms of the adverse events that happened during treatment, the increases in body fat and the decreases in insulin sensitivity, I think really underscore that one has to be very judicious in who you decide to put on those medications. There will be a metabolic price. And so it's about careful selection, using the lower risk drugs, and carefully monitoring patients during treatment so that you can quickly identify children who are getting into trouble.